Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm gonna show you how to boost your FPS for Total Warhammer 3. Really cool game. Uh, we're gonna start with Windows, all the different parameters that you can uh, optimize, and after that we're gonna open the game. So first of all, write game mode in your search bar. Make sure that you're using game mode um, for the past six months. It's pretty good. Uh, it, it does a lot of stuff. Like it will remove tasks that you don't need when you play a game. It else. A little bit with the ram and also it helps with games on the game pass i did a, a comparison between uh, my game pass and steam and when i was using the xbox launcher i always got like two or three fps three, two or three percent less fps versus steam but when i use the game mode it helps uh to uh, to be on par with steam so really important to use that uh xbox game bar i recommend to just remove it causing a lot of stuttering crashes and stuff like that so don't use that uh for the capture also make sure that background recording is at off if you're using the game on the game pass um i don't recommend to use overlay it seems to sometimes cause issues so if you're using the discord overlay amd or nvidia doesn't seem too great right now with the uh, xbox launcher so we're gonna close this. The, on, the, the second thing is the um, graphic setting that you can write on your search. You will need um, an NVIDIA car, 1000 series or more recent, and you will have an option called hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. So make sure this one is that on, and you will need to restart your computer to make sure it's applied. Um, you can expect a two to three percent boost in your FPS. It helps with bottlenecks, but only for old, but not very old very, uh, video car, more entry level video car like the 1050, 1060, 1050 Ti, 2060. You can expect a nice little boost over here. If you have something more powerful, you will not see the difference. I also recommend to update your driver. So if you have Radiant, just go on their website. If you have a, a NVIDIA, go on their website. It's a pretty huge game. Uh, they have dedicated driver for that. So you can expect sometimes 5 to 15% boost in your FPS. So super important to update your driver. Another thing is your energy, right? Energy, go to power option and make sure that you run high performance or balance, something like that. Uh, when you're using a desktop computer, you should not have any issue with this. It will be by default with this. But I see a lot of people having this issue on a laptop uh, for a reason that I don't know. It's like when you plug and unplug your um, your laptop and sometimes your laptop thinks it's still running on the battery, even if it's plugged in the wall and it's staying at power server because of that. So you don't want to use that. Make sure that you're using high performance or balance to run a game. One last thing, it's uh, I have two different guides on my channel, one for overclocking your CPU and another one for overclocking your GPU. You can expect a nice 3% to 15% boost in your FPS. It will really depend on your thermal and your component also, because some component you can't really overclock it. So it really depends, but take a look at that and it will help you with your performance for any game. So now let's open Total War Armor 3. So now inside of the game, so first of all, make sure that you uh, using the resolution, uh, your native resolution from your monitor. So if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. So really don't downscale your resolution here. Your game will look blurry. After that, we're going to go to advanced. A lot of different parameters, as you can see. That's very cool when you play a PC game and you can optimize your game like that. Uh, that's a very good touch for a game. So we're going to start with anti-aliasing. In this game, anti-aliasing, when you use it at TAA and TAA, I, I don't like the anti-aliasing. I feel like the game is blurry and also you're losing FPS. So that's why I am uh, I just like remove the anti-aliasing. If you don't like aliasing in this game, I recommend to go with FXAA. It's a basic one and also you will uh, have more FPS than if you're using TAA and TAA AI. So this is my recommendation for this one. Texture filtering, it really depends on the amount of VRAM that you have on your video card. So if you have like something like 6 gig and more, you can go with 16x air and go texture quality at ultra. If you have 4 gig, go with I and 8x. And depending again what you have, if you have like 3 gig, go for 4 and medium. Just lower it depending on your amount of VRAM. And this is pretty much it for texture quality and texture filtering. VFX detail, this one can uh, be a, a little bit tricky. Um, 
don't use ultra and i you will lose a lot of fps but i didn't see a big difference between low and medium like two percent difference so that's why i recommend to use medium for this one it's a good compromise if you want to keep your image quality and uh a good amount of fps Pretty much the same thing with three details and unit, honestly. Don't use I and Ultra. Medium seems the way to go. A 1% difference between low and medium for three detail and unit detail. So that's why I'm using medium for those one. Depth of field, don't use that. Screen space reflection, don't use it. Really weird this one. I was using, I think, 2 or 3% on my main computer and 7% on my laptop, who's using a 1050 uh, GTX uh, mobile. So don't use that. Lighting quality, I don't know why it came back at high, but go with low with this one. You can expect a nice 6% boost in your FPS. After that, of course, lifespan. This one also, by default, will be at permanent. Uh, and it's taking a lot of resources, so you can select the amount of second that you want the core to, corp sorry, to disappear. So you can go something like 30 or even 60 second, uh, and it will help a lot with your performance, this one. Shadow detail, this one is the most important thing. Honestly, if you're struggling with your FPS, but it's not that bad, you, like for example, you're running the game at uh, 50 FPS and you want to have 60, just start with shadow quality. If you compare extreme to off, you can get like 34% boost in your FPS. It's, it's huge. It's taking a lot of resources. So definitely test your shadow detail at off. If you don't like shadow detail at off because you think that, like your game look flat, just go with medium. Uh, you don't have the low option, but medium is pretty decent, honestly, for uh, the amount of FPS that you get if you compare medium to extreme. And you, your game will not look flat. Grass detail, terrain detail, building detail. This is pretty much all the same if you look at performance. I saw a difference of 2% between both, so medium and low. Uh, but if you compare low to ultra, you can expect a 10% boost in your FPS. So that's why I recommend just to go with medium for those one. Even the unit size, go with medium. Uh, you will like maybe lose 8% if you compare it to low. But still, you will improve your image quality. And it will be worth it because it's not like a huge dip. So uh, I really recommend to use those one at medium. Port, uh, port old quality. Honestly, this one... You should keep it at 3D. It's more like if you're playing on a very old computer like 7 years ago with uh, an RX 2, uh, 280X, something like that. Um, it's not even RX, I think it's R9, whatever. So if you have like a very old GPU, definitely you can test 2D, but normally it should not be a problem for anyone at 3D. After that, you have a lot of stuff that you can check. I recommend to check to uncheck all of them we're gonna start with vsync really depend on your monitor if you have like a g-sync or free sync monitor uh, if you have that don't use free vsync if you don't have this technology and you're getting a lot of tearing when you play the, the game uh definitely use the vsync uh normally vsync will add like input lag but for a game like total war hammer tree you don't really care so just use it if you're getting some tearing uh the only one that you can maybe activate, but it will tax a lot your FPS. It's the ambient inclusion. Uh, this one, you if you check it, you will lose 7% in your FPS, but uh, it helps a lot with your image quality. Again, the game will look a little bit flat without this. Uh, so just do some testing. It really depends where you are right now with the game and your guide. Are you aiming for 60, 120 FPS? So if you have it and you have even more, you can definitely test the ambient occlusion uh, checked. So this is pretty much it. The last one is your graphic card. Make sure that you're using the proper graphic card and the, the good amount of VRAM. Sometimes people with the laptop, they have like an integrate video card and they have a dedicated video card and they have some issue with it with video games. So just make sure that you're seeing your video card here. And after that, you have a benchmark that you can use to just test your graphic parameter. I did the both benchmark. You have one with the battle and one with the campaign. Uh, it will be on my YouTube channel. Everything at ultra on my PC. So you can see the amount of FPS that I add. And this is pretty much it, guys. If you have any question, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.